the battlefield, well under the fire of the enemy. This was the first casualty, and very soon there were several others hit. Then the order was given to fix bayonets and drive the Turks out, which we did with a vengeance. This was the landing at Gallipoli on April 25th, 1915, as described by some of the men that lived through it. More than 50,000 Australian troops fought here, and 8,000 of them died here too. But Gallipoli was just one small part of a much bigger conflict. What's now known as the First World War began in 1914 between these two powerful groups. Australia was still a member of the British Empire and many young Aussies saw it as a chance to sign up and serve their country. I was keen, 100% keen, like, every, like we all were in those days. By November 1914, a force of 20,000 Australian men had arrived in Egypt, ready to fight. Most of the fighting was taking place here, on the Western Front in France. But months in, neither side was winning. So Britain came up with a plan to defeat Germany by attacking its allies, Austria, Hungary and what's now Turkey. Their goal was to take control of this area, called the Dardanelles. Ground forces were sent in at three main points. Many were actually British and French. Australians and New Zealanders made up just one of the landings, at a place we now know as Anzac Cove. When she hit the beach, I gave the word to get out, and out the men got at once, into the water, up to their necks. In darkness, they faced a tough and difficult climb up the beach, while from above, Turkish soldiers and artillery fired on them. Both sides dug trenches for cover. The place was a, a quarter and a bursting shell, you know. For months, the fighting continued, neither side getting an advantage over the other, though several attempts were made. One of those was the Battle of Lone Pine. The Aussies created a diversion by attacking Turkey's front lines, then held their position despite intense fighting. Seven Australians won the Victoria Cross here, the highest award for bravery in wartime. But while the Australian attack was successful, the overall Allied mission failed. By December, the Allies gave up on taking Gallipoli and started planning an evacuation instead. To help, one Aussie soldier came up with this invention, a gun that would go off on its own using weighted cans of water. The drip rifle helped hold off any attacks while the Anzacs withdrew. We thought we'd be very lucky if we got away but they did. And after eight long months, the Gallipoli campaign was finally over. World War I stretched on for another three years. And during that time, on the Western Front, the Anzacs would fight many more battles and lose many more lives than they did at Gallipoli. But they'd also have a much bigger impact which eventually helped the Allies go on to win the war in 1918. Gallipoli wasn't the most important battle Australia was involved in during World War I, but it's still remembered as the first real battle we took part in as a nation. And every year since, on April 25th, people around the country commemorate those who fought and died there. Something still just as important 100 years on.